Adventures by Morse. Carlton E. Morse presents... You'll be dead in a week, featuring Captain Friday. If you like high adventure, come with me. If you like the stealth of intrigue, come with me. If you like blood and thunder, come with me. Nine o'clock in the evening, somewhere out on the Strip to the west of Hollywood. In case you don't know, the Strip is a portion of Sunset Boulevard, which runs through and adjacent to some of the more exclusive residential districts between Hollywood and the Pacific Ocean. In the Strip are some of the more expensive shops, salons, and eating and drinking places. The Strip is not a portion of Los Angeles Captain Friday and his operative Skip Turner would be apt to patronize. Certainly not the flossy drinking establishments with soft lights, boudoir furnishings, and intimate music. And yet, here they are, Captain Friday and Skip Turner, uncomfortably seated on two small chairs before a two-small table in a half-lighted corner of Maggie's Intimate Drinking Salon. Hey, Captain. Huh? You showing up trying to bore me to death? You aren't any more bored than I am. Well, then what are we a-sticking here for? All this plush and soft lights and elegance. Business. We gonna do business in Maggie's intimate drinking saloon? (laughs) Not saloon. S-A-L-O-N? Salon. Well, pardon me while I arch my pinky. Hmm. I asked you a question, Captain. Did you? Yeah. What kind of business we got here in Maggie's place? By the way, where is Maggie? I don't know. Well, it says Maggie's saloon. Salon. Yeah. All the folks I've seen is a hat-check girl out yonder, the one waiter, and the bartender in the next room. And you know, that ain't very many people. Not a very large establishment. Yeah. Seat about 20 or 30 at the most. That's what it means by Maggie's intimate drinking salon. Small, quiet, and exclusive. Yeah, darned exclusive, if you ask me. We're all the guests they got. Isn't there anyone in the other room? No, nope, I can see in there. Nobody but the bartender and the piano player. That makes four of them and only two of us. Piano player, bartender, waiter, and hat check girl. Now, look at Cap, about this hat check girl. Skip, right it... at the moment, we're not interested in hat check girls. Who ain't interested in a hat check girl? I... Oh, you mean the business we got here? Right. Oh. Okay, spill it. Just a minute. Waiter's coming over. Why? We don't want no more of this stuff. Order anyway. Huh. Uh, will there be something more, gentlemen? I guess so. Same as before. And you, sir? Yeah, bring me a glass of milk. Uh, Milk? That's what I said, milk. I beg your pardon? Go on, get me a glass of milk and quit looking like you never heard of the stuff. I will see what can be done. Hey, and wait a minute. Yes? Why ain't that piano player in there playing? It is a little early in the evening yet. Well, it ain't early if he's got paying customers, is it? I will have to pick that up with him. You do that, will you? And tell him to rip off uh, the last roundup or the Dogtown Strutter's Ball, something like that. I will mention your suggestions to him. Dark tones to rot his book. <laughs> no, I don't think he cares for me. Can you blame him? When did you take up milk as a beverage? Oh, I'm just ordering milk now on account of it makes our waiters a darn mad. He takes it as a personal insult. <laughs> hey, what's that? Letter? Well, yeah, I can see it's a letter. Hey, does it explain the reason for our being here? Yeah. Want to hear it? Why, sure. Kind of fancy paper, ain't it? Ain't that a girl's handwriting? Yes, it's fancy paper, and it's a girl's handwriting. Anything else you want to know? Yeah, what's it say? If you'll keep still long enough, I'll read it. Okay, shoot. Letter signed Eve Carson, girl who wired us in San Francisco. This is what she says. It will be very much to your advantage to meet me in Maggie's intimate drinking salon on the Strip sometime between 8 and 9 this evening. I will come directly to your table and join you as though I were an old friend. Please treat me as such. What I have to say to you will take only a few moments, but will mean a great deal to me as well as to you and your friend, Eve Carson. Is that all? That's all. And that's why we're here. Meet Eve Carson and treat her like an old friend. That's right. Yeah, let me have a look at that letter. Go ahead. Very much to your advantage to meet me. Hmm. Does she mean by that that uh, she's young and good-looking, you suppose? Yeah, give me that letter. Well, 
I always did say it was to a fella's advantage to meet a young, good-looking girl. But look, you Cap, she said between eight and nine, and it's ten minutes after nine right now. Yeah, I know. You mean she ain't coming? Hmm. You know as much as I do. But if she's not coming... Hold it. Waiter's coming back. Mm -hmm. Well, hi, sport. See, you found some milk. Quite. Sure, I knew you'd find some if you tried. However, I am to inform you this is positively the last milk I can serve. This is all, huh? Positively. Don't know any accommodating cows personally, I don't suppose. If you please. Okay, let it go. Hey, did you talk to the piano player? I did. Well, why ain't he playing? He is not so disposed. He's what? He is not so disposed. Now, what kind of talk's that? Did you tell him I asked for him to play? I did. What did he say? I'd rather not say. Oh, he did, did he? Well, darn, he's on Ray Hyde. Hey, Skip, sit uh, down. But, but, son... Sit down. Here you are, waiter. Keep the change. Uh, thank you. Okay, beat it. With the greatest pleasure. Captain Friday, we're being insulted by the whole outfit. You started it. Me? You've been riding the waiter ever since we came in. Yeah, but I ain't done nothing to the piano player. I mean, not yet, I ain't. And you're not going to do anything to him, either. Just rough him up a little, maybe? No. He a friend of yours? No. Well, then what hurt? We aren't starting anything in this place until we know why we're here. Well, it don't look to me like we're ever going to know. My girlfriend, Eve Carson, said between 8 and 9, and it's 9.15 right now. Wait a minute. Somebody's coming in. Oh, sure enough. More customers. No women, though. You can see out in the hallway? Yeah, three men. Giving up their coats to the hat check girl. Huh. Funny place for three men to come without women. Well, after all, we came without women. For a reason. Besides, we expected to meet a woman here. Here they come. Yeah. Sitting down across the room from us. Queer-looking setup. Skip. Yeah? Do you have to stare at them? Huh? Was I? Yeah. Now relax. Hey, do you see what I see? What do you see? Well, two of our three customers are gorillas. They're toting pistols, and they don't seem to care who knows it. Huh. Well, on the flea bit side... Don't seem to have much in common with the third member of the party. Yeah, he's a kind of nice-looking fella, ain't he? Now, what do you suppose he's doing associating with them kind of monkeys? Skip, stop looking in their direction. Yeah? Why? They know we're talking about them. They don't like it. So they don't like it. Now, look, Skip. We came here for a special purpose. We don't care why a good-looking, well-dressed, obviously cultured young man is associating with a couple of thugs. It's none of our business. Okay, fella. Hey, waiter. Now, what do you want? Hey, waiter. Uh, you spoke to me? That's right. Get me another glass of milk. I think I told you there is no more milk. Now, look, am I going to have trouble with you? I beg your pardon? Get me another glass of milk. And perhaps uh, you'd prefer to go to some other establishment. No, I wouldn't prefer to go to some other establishment. Get me a glass of milk and step on it. I will see what I can do. Well, go on and do it. Next thing he'll be wanting is a nursing bottle. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> yeah. What are you antagonizing him for, Skip? You really don't want any more milk? I know it. Just that I'm bored. Besides, he's been a trying to high hat us all evening. <laughs> hey, will you excuse me for a minute? Skip, sit down. No, I got something I got to attend to. Well, at least tell me what you're up to so I can be prepared. <laughs> well, sir, I'm going in there and talk to the piano player for a minute. What about? Music, son, music. What do you talk to piano players about? Look, Skip, take it easy. This place is loaded with dynamite. Yeah? Yeah. Now watch your step. Oh, shucks, Captain. Can't do no hurt just having a little music lesson. Well, hi, son. You the whole doggone symphony orchestra in this here joint? That's right. Yeah. <clears throat> Mind if I lean on your piano? Why not? Thanks. My name's Skip Turner. Yeah? Mm-hmm. That's my sidekick in yonder, Captain Bart Friday. So what? Oh, nothing. That's a funny joint you got here. Yeah? Mm-hmm. Why? Well, it's all dolled up like a woman's bedroom. If you don't like it, there's lots of other places on the strip. Sure, I know. Funny thing, though, it don't seem like this was the kind of place that it would attract a couple of gun-slinging gorillas, now does it? Huh? What's the matter? There's a couple of trigger men in here now. Why, sure. You surprised? Why do you come in here and tell me? Sit down. Stop looking over your shoulder. And I still want to know why you came in here and told me. Just thought you might be interested. Oh, here comes the waiter with my milk. In here, waiter. You always drink milk? Not always. Sometimes, more than others. How about having a real drink on the house? Nope. Thanks, just the same. Oh, you wish your milk served here? Yeah, I'll tell you. Hey, did you ever try sipping milk like wine? 
Tastes all right. Oh, oh. You threw that milk in my face. Yeah, I threw that glass of milk in your face. Oh, damn Listen, you. Listen, son, don't never try to serve me no Mickey Finn. Don't never do it. Especially in a glass of milk. You threw that milk in my face. Look at my uniform. Hold. Maybe you want to make something of it? Well, what's the matter with you, piano player? Sit down. This ain't your party. That's right. It ain't my party, is it? Well, what about it, waiter? You want we should bounce each other around for a while, or she will call it quits? Bear, ill bread clout. And there he goes. Call me an ill bread clout on account I didn't drink his Mickey Finn. We don't save Mickey Finns in this place. The heck you don't. We don't save Mickey Finns in this place. Well, son, I'm awful sorry to have to differ with you, but that waiter shown up tried to dish me up one in that glass of milk. I think it's time you and your friends were leaving. Hey, is that friendly? You're more trouble than you're worth. Get your things and get out. You don't say. Yeah. You know, fella, you almost talk like you was the owner of this joint. I am. Oh, now, come on. Don't give us that stuff. Says right on a sign outside the door that this is Maggie's drinking emporium. I'm Maggie. <laughs> no kidding. And they want you and your pal out of here in two minutes. And just to prove it... Hey. You're now looking down the muzzle of a thirty-eight. Captain Friday and his right-hand man, Skip Turner, rushed from San Francisco to Hollywood on a strange and mysterious mission. They were directed to Maggie's intimate drinking salon on the Sunset Strip, where they were to meet a certain Eve Carson. So far, all they've discovered is Maggie, and Skip has just found out that Maggie is a pretty tough customer. I'm Maggie. He... <laughs> no kidding. I want you and your pal out of here in two minutes and just to prove it. Hey. You're now looking down the muzzle of a thirty-eight. Well, darn if I ain't. Hey, that was a cute trick, flipping a pistol out of your coat that away. Never mind the compliment. Gather up your pal and get going. Can you play that 38 as good as you play the piano? I hope for your sake I don't have to show you. Yeah. Well, I'm mighty glad to see you're standing up. What do you mean? Because I just hate hitting a fellow when he's sitting down. Oh, goodness, son. You sure did go down easier than I expected. Feeling kind of rubbery in the knees. Mm-hmm. Well, it's just like I always said, a fella shouldn't never ought to pull a gun unless he intends to use it. <laughs> fella, you're just playing out on your feet. <laughs> that's it. Sit down. Okay, sprawl on a piano if that's how you feel. I gotta be getting back to Captain Friday. Nice meeting you. Be seeing you later. Hey, Captain, you... Well, I'll be doggone, a little old female girl. Where'd you get her, boss? Don't pay any attention to him. He's only Skip Turner. Hello, honey. Hello, Skip. She's ours all right, ain't she? What's that? I mean, she's a little old Eve Carson, sugar, we've been waiting for. Yes, yeah, she's Eve Carson. Well, where'd we get her? She came in while you were in the other room with the piano player. What happened? Oh, I had to smack him a little. He's in there now with his head in his arms, laying over the keyboard, listening to the birdies. And say, you know who he is? No. Do you? Why, sure, he told me. He's Maggie. Maggie? Sure, you know. Maggie's in him a drinking saloon. Salon, Skip. Yeah. Ain't that a heck of a name for a man? Maggie. Well, his name isn't Maggie. But he said he owned this place. That's right, but his name isn't Maggie. Well, he can't amount to very much. Playing his own piano, acting as his own bouncer in his own little dive. That's where you're mistaken. Skip. Yeah? How did you get away with it? Well, you mean socking him? Yes. People don't smack Blackie North. Who's Blackie North? The owner of this place. The man you hit. A gang leader and plenty dangerous. Him dangerous? Well, yes. And what I want to know is why hasn't one of his trigger men shot holes in you? Trigger men? See here. Who are you anyway? Eve Carson. Sure, we know that. But who are you? Why did you ask us to meet you in this hangout? Why is it to our advantage to meet you? Who's Blackie North and why does he have trigger men? And what connection have you with him? Well, that's a lot of questions. And I want a lot of answers. You'll get them. Don't worry. Yeah, and there's one more thing I want to answer, too. What's that? I want to know why that good-looking boy and them two gorillas across the room haven't taken their eyes off you since I come back to the table. And you'll get an answer to that, too. You mean those three men over there are in this, too? Yes. Those two rats are a couple of Blackie North's torpedoes. Yeah? And who's the good-looking dude? Oh, that's Wesley. Wesley, huh? Yes, my brother, Wes Carson. Oh, Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Captain Matt, there's her brother, Wes Carson. Yeah, I heard him. 
Apparently, Wesley doesn't like his sister out with a couple of strange men in a dump of this kind. And I don't know as I blame him so much at that. Hey, how about me going over and introducing myself and bringing them over here? Oh, no. Why not? For two reasons. First? Well, one of those gunmen will prob probably blow a hole in anyone who goes near Wes. You don't say. Second? What? You said you had two reasons for not going after your brother. Oh, oh, second. Well, I, I've got to tell you why I asked you to come here before anything more happens. Oh, you're expecting something more to happen? Well, it's bound to since Skip here slapped Blackie North around. Okay. Relax and tell us about it. Well, first, I, I've got to tell you who Wes and I are. We're the only members of our family left. I'm 24 and Wesley's 28. And between us, we're worth maybe a million, maybe two million dollars. Don't go on, little old female gold mine. Well, that's what a lot of the smart boys thought. Nobody's worked me yet. Yeah? Go on with your story, Eve. Oh, yes. We came to California about two years ago after father, our last living relative, died in the East. We loved it out here. The first year, just getting acquainted. All the resorts and places to play. Oh, it was wonderful. Finally, about a year ago, we rented a house in Beverly Hills because Wes thought it would be fun to be near Hollywood and thought we might get acquainted with some of the motion picture crowd. What's all this leading to? To what's happening tonight. I'm almost through now. About two weeks ago, something happened to my brother. He was coming downstairs to breakfast one morning when he suddenly lost consciousness and plunged headfirst downstairs. Oh, I get it. He bumped his head in the fall and he ain't been the same ever since. And now he's mixing with gangsters. No, I I almost wish it was that. What did happen? Well, he wasn't hurt in the fall, but he went to our doctor to find out why he lost consciousness. And why did he? Well, that's the whole story. There's something dreadful the matter with him. Something incurable. I, I don't know much about it. All I know is the doctor told Wes, in a week, you'll be dead. What's that? Hey, he didn't. Yes, he did. In so many words... In a week, you'll be dead. You didn't just take one doctor's word for it. Oh, no. We checked with three other specialists. And they all say in a week your brother Oviano will be dead? Yes. Well, where do we come into the picture? Well, well, I heard about you boys. Read about some of your adventures. I mean, you sounded like the, the kind of men a couple of people in trouble could depend on. You're darn tootin', honey. Just a minute, Skip. Huh? Let's hear what you have in mind first, Miss Carson. Well, it's perfectly simple. Naturally, when Wes heard the bad news, he was hit pretty hard. He didn't make a big scene or anything, but he kind of shrugged his shoulders and said, what have I got to lose? And he's been running wild ever since? Well, he's been doing everything he can think of that amuses him. Hmm. And right now, it amuses him to be tied up with Blackie North and his bunch of cutthroats. Yes. And what do you want us to do? Look, he's only got a week more to live. Well? Well, if, if you two could, could sort of look out for him, take care of him, protect him. Protect him from what? Why, why from himself, I, I suppose. <laughs> it's a funny assignment. Oh, no, it isn't. Look, you don't understand. Well, if he's got to die, at least he can die with a family name clean, not, not as a criminal. Well, say some more. What else? Well, that's, that's all. Get him out of Blackie North's clutches. Keep him out of the hands of the police. Keep him from losing his life in some crazy or criminal experience. Or from committing suicide when he's low in his mind. Keep him from hurting himself or anyone else for this week that's left. Hey, now, that's an order that is an order. In other words, your brother figures he's got just a week to live, so what difference does it make what he does or how he does it? Yes, that's it exactly. Well, honey, uh, it ain't pleasant to say, but what difference does it make? Oh, no, he mustn't. He's fine and clean and good. He's always lived that way until... until this happened. He can't become something evil now, something that society once wiped out, something to make sensational headlines for the paper. Oh, no, he mustn't. If I get you right, you want us to curb his last week of fun just so you can write he was a good man on his tombstone. You're wrong. You were never more wrong. I want him to have all the fun and excitement he wants... All I'm asking is that you folks keep him out of trouble, keep him out of jail, keep him from harm or violence. Oh, so that's it. And him not caring what he does. Well, it's worth $10,000 to me. Ten grand? <clears throat> Cappy, that ain't hay. You mean that? 
ten thousand and expenses. And here's a thousand in small bills to show good faith. Yeah? What about it, Skip? Put that grand in your pocket before she changes her mind. All right, Miss Carson. It's a bargain. And a bad one, if I'm not mistaken. It won't be easy. The police are looking for Wes right now. What's that? Hey, you didn't tell us that. Well, why should I? Hey, Cappy. Trouble's coming up. What sort of trouble? Well, I've been watching the hat check girl. This is the third time she's turned customers away. She keeps telling people the place is full up. Not letting anyone in, huh? Uh-huh. Blackie North still unconscious on the piano in the next room? Yep. Still laying just like a left her. Miss Carson. Yes? I think our first move to help your brother will be to free him from those two trigger men over there. Well, they're just Blackie North's men. If you really want to help him, free him from Blackie North. Eventually. But first, we'll wrap up those two gorillas. Skip. Yeah. I'll go get them. Hey, what about me? You sit tight with Miss Carson. Keep an eye on the next room and especially watch the back door. Don't let anyone poke a gun through a crack and open up on us. Oh, you'll be shot down before you get halfway across the room to my brother. By those two men with your brother? Yes. <laughs> watch and see. Keep me covered, Skip. Dive in when I yell. You bet you. Why, Skip, what's the matter with Captain Friday? He acts like he was drunk. Yeah, good job acting, too. Staggering closer and closer to your brother's table. You, you mean it's just an act? Yeah, he's almost close enough now. Now watch. Get him, Skip. Yeah! That a boy, Captain. That's both of them. <laughs> And now, if you'll excuse me, son, I'll tap that waiter on the chin and make it 100%. <laughs> Hello, Wesley, old kid. Boss wants to talk to you. Say, what's the idea? Who asked you to crash my party? Sorry to butt in like this. Well, I was sitting here quietly drinking with a couple of friends. The next thing I know, you two have beaten them into unconsciousness. <laughs> Take it easy, fella. Well, who do you think you are, anyway? How about coming over to our table and talking it over? Why? Because I think that's how your sister would like it. She is your sister, isn't she? Eve, certainly. Now then, come on. Well, how'd we do, Miss Carson? You boys are rather wonderful, you know that. Oh, how well, the lady does talk. Sit down, Carson. Hello, Wes. What's the idea, Eve? Are you the cause of all this? The cause of what, Wesley? Well, the whole Blackie North gang lying around like a bunch of stiffs. Even Blackie himself sprawled across his piano in there. Do you really mind? I mean, they're nothing to you, are they? Oh, why should they be anything to me? I just thought they might be amusing. But, Eve, if you think anyone's going to bounce Blackie North and his men around the way they've been bounced around tonight and not pay for well, how about letting us worry about that, son? Well, who are you? Oh, I'm sorry. This is Skip Turner, and this is Captain Bart Friday. Will somebody tell me what this is all about? Sure. Your sister here has hired us to play bodyguard and fall guy for you during the next week. She told you I'd be dead in a week? That's right. And that during that time, I intend doing whatever it suits me to do? Yep. Yeah. And you two guys are crazy enough to agree to see me through? Why not? <laughs> Suits me. You asked for it. Hey, you seem doubtful, fella. Well, naturally. Dangerous, huh? Unless you or the police put Blackie North out of the way, he'll get you. As sure as we're sitting here. Yeah, let's not worry about that for now. Your sister said the police wanted you. Eve, you told them... Why not? They're here to protect you from the police as well as everyone else. Is that on the square? Looks like it. We gave our word we'd see you through everything for a week. Well, if, if you mean it... We do. Now, why do the police want you? They don't know they want me. They just want the guy who stole this handful of diamonds out of a certain movie star's bedroom last night. Holy mackerel, Captain. Look at them diamonds. Anybody else know you stole them? No. Why'd you do it? Oh, just for the thrill, just to see if I could. Mind if I take them? Sure, why not? What do you want them for? You know, just thinking how pleased the police would be to come along and find these diamonds in Blackie North's pocket. What's that? Yeah, and how surprised Blackie would be. You, you mean plant them on Blackie? Why not? Didn't you say that unless we finished him off or the police got him, he'd stop at nothing until we were dead? Yes, that's true. Then we're doing two good deeds, helping the police capture a criminal and fixing it so we won't be murdered. Skip, go out the bar and get the police on the telephone. Tell them to hurry out to Maggie's intimate drinking saloon? Salon, Skip. Yeah, and what'll I say when they ask me who's talking? Oh, tell them you're a fairy godmother to all good policemen. <laughs> Man, that's something I always wanted to be. <laughs> Very godmother to a policeman. <laughs> Captain, we're not going to be here when the police arrive, are we? Not at all. As soon as Skip has stirred up the police, I suggest we adjourn to the Carson home for a good night's rest. Yes, everything's prepared for you two to stay with us. No, I don't want to go home. But, Wes... I don't want a good night's rest. You know what I want to do? What do you want to do? I want to rob a bank. Wes... And I know just the bank I want to rob. Wes, you can't rob a bank. Yes, I can. For seven days, I can do anything I want to. 
And you've agreed to cover up for me. But why do you want to rob a bank? Because I've never robbed a bank. And in seven days, I'll be dead. Hi, Kathy. I tied up the hat check girl and gagged her. Hey, you hear that? What's the matter? The police, they're coming. You mean you called them? I didn't have to. They got wind of something. Hey, we better get moving. Everybody out the back way. We can't get caught here. Carson, take your sister. Come on, Skip. Whoopee! <laughs> First it's Blackie North, and now it's the police. Come on, let's go. Here is a strange assignment for Captain Friday and Skip Turner. The guarding of a man who has only a week to live. Listen next week to the second episode of You'll Be Dead in a Week, entitled $200,000 to Lose. Next week, at the same time, you are listening to Adventures by Morse.